The biggest barrier in growing a business, and it's becoming more and more apparent every freaking day, is like, who's the talent? Like if somebody handed you $5 million today, the constraint that you would have is an expertise constraint. Like you don't personally have the expertise to make, you've never taken a home service business to whatever they're trying to get. Just like I haven't either. Like that still has to be solved for us. We don't see a raise in the near future because I believe that a capital constraint ends up being good. Like I think it is a net good for the business that we have a capital constraint. I think it forces us to be frugal. I think it forces us to hire effectively. We have to use our resources sparingly. And I think all of those things matter now because at 100 million, if there is a capital partner, like those muscles that we learned on the way up will be even more impactful when we're there. Whereas it would be a much harder boat to turn if capital wasn't a constraint. That makes sense. You built the systems in place so that when you do run into the actual problems again, which is why I think that people um, in the PE firm have actually had a lot of issues running. Uh, I mean, you hear the horror stories of them running uh, HVAC and plumbing companies. And, and at the end of the day, it's because they don't have the systems in place for the growth that they're trying to. Ooh. Totally. This is just sort of... You could run this same thought experiment with any other constraint in your business. And I think everybody wants to run it with money because that's always the one that we feel the most. But like what happens if there's a lead flow constraint or there's an expertise constraint or a leadership constraint or a capacity constraint, it is all solvable. And in the process of solving it, you're unlocking the next barrier to your next step. I think solving it forces you to build a good business. And if your business doesn't have a path to 100 million without raising, not counting VC, is that a business that you want to run? Like, do the unit economics make sense? Let me be abundantly clear. If somebody wants to come and give me $10 million, John, I'm going to say yes. I think with a partner, like, they have to bring more than cash. Because, like, this is just back to the constraint problem. Like... I used to think that cash was enough because I had the expertise and now I know that I don't have the expertise and I also don't have the cash. Like you gotta bring more to the table. You have to be able to like, how do you help me unlock and how do you resolve like these two or three constraints? How do you resolve the executive constraint? And we're not sponsored by them, but I, I fully agree. And so we're not sponsored by these guys. I'm gonna shout them out. Leap Partners, L-E-A-P Partners. Um, great group of guys. They, they've done some roll-ups in the, the um, alarm space industry before, and they've sold in the whole nine yards, and now they're doing an HVAC plumbing, and they're located in, in Nashville. So I've met with them a few times just to talk shop. Really nice guy, John. Yeah, though, like what they bring to the table is they bring like all your marketing, all your HR, all your accounting, and they take all that constraint and then they give you like we're obviously the financial portion and then you get purchase purchasing power trucks purchasing power so they do remove a lot of it. so i know there's people out there that are working to kind of fix that back end no there are like chris Hoffman would be a good example of the way his deal structure works is it looks like growth equity and maybe i, I mean talk to him but they reduce expertise constraint a ton they reduce lead flow because they bring that they there's a lot going on there. So that would be a good partner. Yeah. I mean, Chris Hoffman, I have seen firsthand as he moved into our market and then moved into a, a adjacent market and has absolutely been crushing it. Like they have that lead flow constraint portion on lock. I guess not go against, but they moved in similar times to- Well, Nashville's competitive. Yeah. They had Cool Ray. They have- so they moved in at the same time as Cool Ray, and Cool Ray has dumping money. They've been dumping money in this market, and in my opinion, I haven't seen the actual numbers on like either book. They did, yeah, they didn't do well. They didn't do well, and and Hoffman Brothers did. It's just incredible. Like the the amount of lead flow that Chris's team is able to been doing at Hoffman is absolutely phenomenal. Hundred percent. Thanks for tuning in to Owned and Operated, the podcast for home service entrepreneurs. 